The Little Mermaid remake somehow does the impossible. It takes a completed and well-loved story, doubles the length with pointless shit that adds nothing to it, subtracts key moments that build the characters up, before eventually poisoning the whole narrative with their fucking awful woke politics. You know, it takes real talent to ruin a classic story. They had every advantage you could possibly want. A well-written plot, great songs and good characters. And yet somehow they have turned all of that into shit. HOW DO YOU FUCK THAT UP?! This is what happens when you hire egotistical, talentless writers who think that they can do better than the source material. And when they try to improve upon it, these dumb cunts end up destroying it in the process. Now, if you unfortunately watch the remake like I did, you'll have noticed that there are many small problems in this story that the original never had. Most people won't recognise them, as they probably filled in the blank holes with their nostalgia and memories of the original. Take the kiss the girl scene, it's set up in the beginning of the movie that Sebastian is a composer, as he was arranging Ariel's birthday party. Skills he goes on to use to orchestrate the fish and create the famous kiss the girl song. But in the remake, he is no longer a composer, he is just the advisor to the king. And when this scene happens, he just gets everybody to sing, because that is what they did in the original movie. It's little moments like that, those setups and payoffs that have been erased, just makes this remake so much worse than the animation. So the film's budget is reported to be a massive $250 million, and since they clearly did not spend that money on the CGI, which looks like shit, I'm convinced that this movie was just a giant tax write-off, and most of the money was actually spent by the executives on one of their creepy eyes wide shut parties. We have the director of the movie who is a man called Rob Marshall. Well, he has a history of directing musicals that almost nobody likes, which is probably why he chose to direct this piece of shit, and what a piece of shit it is. Every man is shown to be weak and pathetic compared to the women around them, especially Eric, who is undermined and cooked at every opportunity. He's not allowed to show any masculinity and constantly needs to be rescued by Ariel, who steals key moments from his character because the writers obviously fucking hate Eric. They also thought that they were being progressive by having Ariel be less in love with Eric and more in love with the human world. But what they have shown us is that Ariel is more interested in material wealth than love. I'm sure there is a word for women who only like men for the things that they can provide and not the man themselves. Whore! Halle Berry has said that she has seen a lot of racist backlash to her playing Ariel, and that is because she has a larger field of view than the rest of us, almost like a chameleon. Maybe if somebody would push her eyes, which are located on the side of her head, back into the correct position, then she would see a lot less racism. Now, for some insane reason, they decided to hire Aquafina to play the role of Scuttle, a character who originally was a man until they gender-swapped it to be a woman. Why? Aquafina strikes me as a woman who has been told nothing but lies all of her life. Lies like, she is funny, she can act, and she has a great personality. But in reality, everyone is too afraid to tell her the truth, in case they get fired from their jobs and are blacklisted in Hollywood. Here we have a behind-the-scenes footage of her being incredibly unfunny, and yet all of the people here are laughing disingenuously. I love you, Sebastian, and I want to get married to you, and I want to do it in Vegas, and I want my family to be there as witnesses. Was I funny? No. It's like the Soviet Union where everybody kept clapping for Stalin and nobody would stop clapping in case they disappeared the next morning. Well, I'm not a Hollywood pussy so I'll say it. Aquafina, you're not funny, you can't sing, and you're always the worst character in every movie I see. Another thing I found interesting about this movie is that even though woke rich elitists are trying to blackwash the Danish tale by setting it in the Caribbean and making Ariel black, they went full retard and filled the island with European architecture, clothing, technology, and white people, making it look more like Europe than the Caribbean. The reason why they did this is because they wanted black royalty, but if you look at African royalty in the 18th century, it lacks a certain sense of charm and sophistication when you compare it to the Europeans and they didn't have the balls to put that in The Little Mermaid. If you're going to Africanize the story, then they should stop being pussies and make the island look like an 18th century African kingdom. Show some balls. I got balls. Now, we all know why Disney made Ariel black. The first reason was to cause controversy and to piss off the audience, hoping that the backlash would drum up more interest in the movie, as they have already spent a fortune on it. 
Unfortunately for Disney, blackwashing a character only seems to be effective in the western world as the rest of the planet doesn't seem to give a shit according to the overseas box office. And the second reason for the blackwash was to ensure that all of the shill critics would do what they have always done and that is to simp for Disney and call the fans racist. What a bunch of corrupt fucking cunts. They have done this so much that it's become the standard practice of the industry. They blackwash a character intentionally to cry racism and afterwards they wank themselves off alongside all the other dickheads in Hollywood and pretend that they are helping minorities who they don't actually give a fuck about as the only people they like to help is themselves, the greedy cunts. Don't believe me? Well, Disney already has a black princess that they can make a movie out of any time they want and yet they don't. Why? Well, it's because for all of their talk about representation, they don't think a movie about an original black princess would work. Princess Tiana is ignored by Disney as they don't see her having any value, neither in money or virtue signalling. Because they're assholes! So usually I would dive into the plot bareback, but since this plot is basically the same as the original movie, I'm just going to be pointing out the differences between them, rather than explaining the entire story. The movie opens with a quote from the Danish author who created The Little Mermaid, which is ironic since they go out of their way to scrub the Danish roots of this story. The fucking audacity these people have. They insert their politics into the story and then they try to legitimise their changes by quoting the author. How dare you stand where he stood. So instead of being unaware to the existence of the mermaids, the humans actively try to kill them. Also notice that all of the evil sailors trying to kill an innocent mermaid are all white. Coincidence? I think not! We see Triton, who is not celebrating Ariel's birthday. Instead, he is meeting with his daughters, and each one of them looks nothing like him. I guess after Triton's wife died, he swam around the seven seas, fucking every mermaid he came across, and having several bastards. You're a great dad! In the original, they all look like they came from the same family, but in this one, it looks like a poster for a modern diversity course. Well, I guess Triton must be paying a fortune in child support. When Ariel meets Scuttle, we can see that she is eating fish right in front of the other fish. Ah. Humans are evil because they kill and eat the fish from the sea, and yet this film doesn't acknowledge the fact that Scuttle has done the exact same thing. <laughs> Come back, Flounder, it's just Scuttle! Are you fucking stupid? He just ate a fish that looks like Flounder right in front of him. Why the fuck wouldn't he panic? How dumb is Ariel not to understand this? Would you be calm if a lion ate a person in front of you? Obviously not, but these people are fucking idiots. So they have a conversation and Scuttle is somehow able to breathe and talk underwater, even though she is a bird. That's fucking stupid. In the original, they talk to Scuttle on land, because obviously he's a fucking bird, he has lungs, he needs air. Why is everyone so fucking stupid? We then see Ursula, who is no longer just an evil witch, but also Triton's sister. Well, that's just silly. Silly, yes. Idiotic, yes. Why does nobody in Triton's family look alike? His daughters don't look like their dad, and Triton doesn't look like his sister. She has octopus legs and he has fins. Another change they have made is that Eric is no longer a real prince and is in fact adopted. That's retarded. They made this change because they did not want a white male to be in charge. Instead, his adopted mother is queen of the island, who Eric has to answer to. His father dies off screen as well because they only wanted a black queen to be in charge, not her husband. This change is both retarded and unnecessary to the plot, as she was not in the original story because she had no relevance to the plot. My guess is that Disney included this for that sweet, delicious ESG money they love. Soul soliciting pickfuckers. Sebastian finds Ariel's cave, and instead of her obsessing over a statue of Eric, she is instead admiring just a generic statue of nobody. Because Disney can't have a woman chasing after a man. When Sebastian sings Under the Sea, he is trying to dissuade you from going to the surface, but you're such an empty-headed fuck that you don't understand what he's trying to do, so you sung alongside him. Is she a retard? We have a scene where Eric is getting lectured by the Black Queen for being a sailor and crashing his ship, because the writers take every opportunity they can to destroy him as a character. 
Anyway, he runs off like a fat teenage girl and does a gay little song about his feelings, which is completely pointless and out of place. Back under the sea, Ariel's sisters are cleaning up the wreckage of a sunken ship and they are complaining about the wreckage. Do these humans have any idea how much damage their shipwrecks do? I'm sorry that the dead sailors have inconvenienced your life. If only they would have known how much that bothered you, then I'm sure they wouldn't have crashed into the sea. Just how fucking narcissistic are these mermaids? Humans die mermaids most affected. They go on to say that all of this wreckage is damaging the coral, but somebody clearly didn't do any research, as shipwrecks tend to be good places for coral to grow, you stupid bitch. Also, why is Triton the king of the seven seas and all of his daughters picking shit up off the floor like they are carrying out a sentence for community service? Don't they have any guards that could do this for them? Triton shows up at Ariel's cave to destroy her human shit and it's revealed that a human somehow killed Ariel's mother. That just raises further questions! When Triton confronts her in the original, she says this. Savage harpooning fish eaters! Incapable of any feeling Daddy, I love him! But in this one... He's a human! You're a mermaid! Yes, but that doesn't make us enemy. You call that acting? The eels show up afterwards, but for some reason, the writers have chosen not to give them a personality. I don't know why they got rid of those characters, probably because the fans actually liked them and they couldn't have that. When Ariel makes a deal with Ursula and gets her voice taken, it looks like whoever animated this scene is a fan of hentai. Oh. Meaning that's tentacle porn. Ariel, who has just gotten legs for the first time, is somehow able to swim from the ocean floor to the surface unassisted, as she doesn't need help from anybody. Ladies can do stuff now. Whereas in the original, Sebastian and Flounder had to drag her to the surface, because without them she would have drowned, as obviously she can't use her new legs. Ursula has also changed the spell to make Ariel forget about the deal they had to kiss Eric. This addition doesn't change the story and is completely pointless because Sebastian just reminds her about the deal. Ariel swims for what appears to be several hours on her new legs until she is eventually rescued by a random fisherman in the sea. Oh, how convenient! This is just like that retarded scene in the Rings of Power, where Galadriel also swam for several hours before eventually being saved by a random passerby. The ocean isn't a bus stop, it's fucking massive. Your chance of getting rescued are near zero. Also notice how Ariel is being rescued by some random black dude, rather than Eric on the beachfront, because the freaks in Hollywood can't have a white man rescue a black woman. No, they have to undermine Eric's character at every turn. Now, Eric finding Ariel in the original makes him connect to her, as he feels responsible and has to look out for her. By not having him do this, it messes with their chemistry and removes a key moment that builds up their relationship. Ariel sings a new song that takes place entirely inside of her head, and surprising nobody, it's shit. No way! No way! And so too is the kiss the girl scene, as it felt like the people gave a performance that you would do if you were drunk at a karaoke bar. The scene also lacks a sense of charm and humour that the original had, with Ariel desperately trying to get Eric to kiss her, which is actually funny to see, but these two just come off as boring romantic black holes. Instead of Sebastian whispering Ariel's name to Eric, he has to guess it using the stars. He picks out Ares, then she moves his mouth to get him to say Ariel. Good thing they both know about star constellations, even though she lived underwater all of her life. The next day, Aquafina proves me right once again, as she shows us how talentless she is trying to rap. They're trying to blow up the pigeons, but those are just urban legends. I know a lot of really bad pigeons. There's mental patients who have smeared <laughs> canvases with shit who have expressed more than you have in that. The marriage between Ursula, who is in disguise, and Eric takes place on the island rather than the ship, which is important because when Ursula kidnaps Ariel, they swim out into the ocean miles away from the coast, but Eric is somehow able to track them down. No, that doesn't make sense. Before that though, Triton gives Ursula his trident for Ariel's freedom and she just fucking vaporizes him. He is completely dead and is ashes. In the animation, she turned him into a slug monster, which is actually very important for his character at the end of the movie. Ursula turns into a giant, but instead of Eric sailing the ship and killing Ursula, the writers decide to rob Eric of his heroic moments and give it to Ariel, leaving him tangled up in a mess of ropes like the pathetic loser he is. 
So Ariel kills Ursula and she drops the trident. It falls to the ocean floor and when it lands, it somehow is able to bring Triton back to life. This is fucking retarded. He was literally ash and now he's alive. This begs the question, if the trident is capable of bringing the dead back to life, then why has Trident not brought back Ariel's mother? He clearly has the power to do so. The only reason why he hasn't is because he probably doesn't want to. He gets to be single again, and judging by the multi-ethnic children he has, Triton likes to go around the seven seas, fucking every mermaid he can get his hands on. But this leaves me with a very dark question, since every one of Triton's daughters clearly has different mothers. Where are they as well? Triton can't keep using the same excuse that some random human came by and killed his wives. When asked who the man was, Miss Stotch replied, Some Puerto Rican guy. What is much more likely is that Triton goes from sea to sea, fucking girls getting them pregnant, and when his wife gets too much trouble, he kills her, blames it on a human, then goes to the next sea miles away and repeats the cycle. Yeah, because we certainly didn't do it. No! <laughs> oh, no! It's probably why he tells his daughters to hate humans. It's to cover up the fact that he's a serial killer. Anyway, I'll take my tinfoil hat off and go back to the story. When the writers made the change of killing Triton and letting Ariel kill Ursula, they have created a major problem. Because in the original story, Triton was alive and he saw Eric save his daughter's life. This makes him not only gain respect for humanity in Eric, but makes him comfortable in letting his daughter go. He knows Eric is a man who can protect her. But in this one, Triton was nothing but dust, so he hasn't been shown how noble humans can be or how brave Eric is. In fact, if Eric was caught in a bunch of ropes and my daughter had to save him, my opinion of Eric would be even lower. So because they have to follow the original movie, Triton seems to be okay with her daughter marrying a pathetic loser like Eric. He goes on to give her legs and they sail off to their honeymoon. Who the fuck cares? Eric has been cooked so much in this movie that it wouldn't surprise me on their honeymoon that he catches Ariel sucking off the pool cleaner. Lastly, they have added on a scene at the end where Triton says goodbye to Ariel. They both say this. Thank you for sharing me. You shouldn't have had to give up your voice to be heard. That was so gay. That feminist message was inserted more forcefully than a doctor's finger during a prostate exam. And with that shit statement, the movie finally ends. Oh, thank God for that! This remake is what happens when you hire activists to retell the story, but their only goal is to rape a beloved story from your childhood. They do this because they hate the fans and they hate the fact that they are incapable of making art. So if they cannot make art themselves, then nobody else can. And that is why these people are cunts. Do not watch the remake, watch the original. This movie is nothing more than a pile of cat shit.